Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite Executive Director Ms. Humzile Melambonuka of UN Women to deliver her speech. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Melambonuka with a warm round of applause. Thank you very much, Madam Director, Secretary General Ban Ki moon, Excellencies, Your Royal Highness, colleagues and co-conveners of this wonderful conference, leaders from civil society, ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased to be here today at the opening of the World Education Forum 2015. I'd like to thank Director General of UNESCO for inviting UN Women and for the opportunity to be co-convener of this wonderful conference. I also want to thank the other co-conveners for the collaboration that we've had. At UN Women, we regard education as one of the most important and worthwhile human endeavor with the highest rates of return. The only way to turn the youth demographic dividend into development of nations and a mechanism to end intergenerational poverty. The Education for All agenda and the related MDGs have led to some significant advances in education since 2000, notwithstanding some of the setbacks we still have. We have seen unprecedented progress in access to formal education and schooling and in gender parity, especially in primary education. Almost all countries have tried hard to open the doors of learning for the largest number of young people in history. We have to build on this success and address the shortcomings. We have the highest number of graduates emerging from tertiary education. In some countries, more women than men. But this progress is not translating sufficiently into decent jobs and employment and full realization of women's rights. Still, two thirds of the world's illiterate adults are women. We have many more children who are at school but are not learning and many more dropouts. For post-2015, we have to deliver change for women and girls. Recent studies show that the intersecting nature of discrimination for women and girls accumulates, and the number of girls and women affected call upon us to double our efforts. We have to make sure that schools and education is accessible to all those who need it, and that schools are safer. So that going to school for a girl and a boy in Nigeria or Pakistan is not an act of bravery. Girls from rural areas, ethnic minorities, and indigenous groups continue to have the lowest levels of literacy and education. These are the girls that need to be targeted so that they can benefit from our efforts, so that we can truly make sure that we do not leave anyone behind. When public services are missing, such as safe water, healthcare workers, care facilities for both the young and the old, the deficit is made up primarily by women and girls. Hence, infrastructure and macroeconomic policies are relevant for enabling a progressive path of girls and women. Poor infrastructure impacts on retention, on retention of girls, especially adolescent girls in secondary education. Globally, women do nearly two and a half times more unpaid care work and domestic work than men and that has a direct impact on the capacity of women to access education and training. We have to recognize unpaid care work, 
redistribute it, and ensure that it does not continue to be a barrier to girls' and women's progress. For education can go a long way in teaching about equality. It has to be a part of the instruments that we have to enhance gender equality. We have to make sure that at a very young age, boys and girls are introduced to a value system that embraces gender equality in order to make sure that the generations to come are truly equipped for equality. Men and boys must play an important role as part of bringing about the far-reaching changes in our society. Education empowers girls and women to take full advantage of their own lives and actively participate in the development of their communities and countries as both beneficiaries and agents of change. We must make a concerted effort to push to remove all the identified constraints and ensure the life-changing empowering impact of education is realized. A perfect world in which people are equal and can, can only be achieved if our education provides a universal education for such. This requires for a build and a bold vision and decision making whose time has come, whose time is now. As we adopt the post-2015 global agenda, we must make sure that we do not leave the women's agenda behind because we will not be able to benefit to the extent we are supposed to benefit from the new agenda and dispensation if we leave the girls and women behind. This forum provides a crucial opportunity to address the gaps and ensure the fulfillment of education for all promise as the bedrock of peaceful, just, and equal societies. UN Women is advocating strongly for, truly, for a truly transformative post-2015 sustainable development agenda that will change the unequal distribution of power, resources, and opportunities. This cannot wait. Education is a fundamental part of this change. Our leaders, our experts, our parents need to believe in the change and invest in bringing about this change. We fully support Education 2030 as part of our overall drive for gender equality by 2030. Let us seize this momentum, let us seize the moment and make change real for all and together. Thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent message. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the Executive Director of UN Women, Ms. Fumzila Melambo-Nuka.